Hello, you have arrived. Welcome to Top 5 Dead or Alive. Hello and welcome to Top 5 Dead or Alive. I'm your host, Taylor Huff. And with me today, my first in-house guest, the Peruvian love wonder, <laughs> Sergio uh, Marquina. Hello, everyone. I thought we were over that nickname <laughs> like 10 years ago. <laughs> oh, nope, it's still around. He's an intellectual, uh, a professor type, if you will, <laughs> but also uh, just a lot of fun and... We're here to bring you the top five most binge-worthy TV shows and movies today. Yes, something I'm very qualified to talk about <laughs> after this pandemic. <laughs> yes, that is true. And we've uh, been through the ringer, but uh, we have all have a, a bachelors in binging. <laughs> binging shows. Yeah, it's been a good year for all the TV shows and all the companies, yeah. I guess. Did you know there was a there was a new streaming platform that was supposed to launch? That was um, for phones. Designed it's uh, designed Quibi, for your right? commu- yeah for your commute. <laughs> what a terrible <laughs> time to launch! Yeah, they started and it launched and then it folded in a year. <laughs> yeah. and I think that's the timeline there. So uh, we want to give a shout out to the podcast streaming the net with Sarah and Brett for the idea for this episode. Uh, Brett's a friend from college, and I was listening to his podcast, and I uh, just really like the idea. Uh, that It's the main theme for his podcast, so he's going to expound on that every week. So go check that one out. Um, but So that's where I got the idea for this type of uh, episodes of most binge-worthy for uh, TV shows and movies. I, I leaned more on TV shows than movies. I don't know about you, but... Yeah. Because that the idea of binging kind of um, goes hand in hand with shows a little bit more than movies, unless it's like a trilogy or a or the. Let's be honest. Unless it's Star Wars. Or unless Star it's Star Trek. Wars. Because <laughs> yeah. Star Wars, apparently now they're um, moving on into a totally different. Like there's no longer Skywalker saga. Like they're done with that for Star Wars. Right. So now that's gonna go into like something else. Yeah, and they launched, wouldn't they launch, like, the High Republic or the Old Republic? Oh, yeah, I saw, they're basically making an MCU out of Star Wars. Yeah, Which, I don't know, ah, that's a different podcast. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) The last three They announced, they announced so many, uh, that they were launched on Disney Plus. Yeah, They have really smart creators, so they've done, actually, um, mm, oh, yeah, one of them was gonna be my, oh, that's me. Oh, you're good. I haven't figured out how to turn (laughs) off this alarm from my watch. Um, No, No worries. The, I was gonna say the Mandalorian. Actually, there's a non-rural mention. I was gonna say the Mandalorian is a okay. good show, okay. but it's not binge-worthy because it's only two episodes, two, two seasons. Two seasons, yeah. But like the people that are writing that stuff, really, really smart. Yeah, right? Dave Filoni and uh, John Favreau. Yeah, doing a very good job with Star Wars uh, in that capacity. Yeah, I love the Mandalorian. Um, and that last episode, especially, or actually, when they started with, okay. So I went back and watched the Ahsoka, a little uh-huh. bit of Ahsoka stuff in um, Clone Wars. Yeah. So I I enjoyed the Ahsoka episode and then going into Boba Fett and yeah. then that last episode. Well, that whole arc, Skywalker. like the last like five episodes were the ones that got really good. Yeah, about exactly. I think it's just they returned to the basics of Star Wars, which was a Western. Yeah. Like, because that, cause that's the thing, like, Katie doesn't really watch my wife. <laughs> she's not really a huge Star Wars fan, so I'm like putting her up to date on stuff. Right. But with The Mandalorian, I was like, we can watch this because it's just a Western, and you can watch it without knowing what's going on. It's just a good time. Like, all you need to know is that dude shoots people, <laughs> yeah. and he's cool. Like, <laughs> yeah, know. he's just a bunny. Um, yeah, it was, like the first season especially it was more filler. Yeah. Or, or like you could see that some were filler episodes, like especially that one, I guess it was the second season, when they just kind of transport... Uh, like, the whole episode is him transporting one guy from here to somewhere else. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't remember the whole why he needed to do that, but... Isn't there a name pre- for those episodes? 
something. I was thinking filler, but there's got to be a better word. I heard for it. there's a. I forget the term for it, but there's like <clears throat> every season, every like or, or most seasons, I guess, of shows. They'll have like one episode that I, I forget what it's called, like a bottle episode or something, mm-hmm. where it's like oh, yeah, all takes place in one spot because they blew all the budget on a different, or it's to save budget. It's basically like one episode is they either it all takes place in one room or it's yeah. the one that all takes place in like. I don't know. It's weird. Maybe like it's bottleneck or something like that. Yeah, maybe something like that. I forget what it is, but it was fascinating. So now every time I watch an ep- a, a series, I'm like, yeah, oh, like, that's oh, the that. episode. It's, a, it's a that one. We've been on that <laughs> same vehicle for the past <laughs> yeah. three hours. That one's it. Yeah. So, yeah. That's what it is. All right. So uh, let's get into it. So um, we have defined binge-worthy as having a trilogy or like movies that have sequels. Or shows that have three or more seasons. So we're going to go through our personal top fives. Oh, and of course they have to be awesome in every way, shape, and form. (laughs) We're going to go through our top fives, uh, talk about our favorite characters or quotes or whatever. And um, then we'll go through uh, best moments. uh, And later we'll do that new segment we introduced last episode, (laughs) Guess the Five. All right, so uh, let's go five, four, three, two, one. Okay. And Is it then your five, my five, your four, my four. Right, right. Okay, right, let's right. do that. So you start with your five. Okay. This is a rough order because I just have five in my mind, and I guess these are newer shows. I was trying to think of oldest shows. Yeah. Um, my disclaimer will also be that The Office is just the best show. Right, right, right. right. So I'll be... take The Office out so that it's not at the right. Oh, okay. Or... No, I'll just take it out to okay. have other ones because it doesn't yeah. feel fair. Okay. It's just the best show ever. <laughs> um, I agree. Yeah. Uh, okay, where's my fifth? Okay, my fifth one, going back to the Star Wars thing, <laughs> The Clone Wars. Okay. It's super nerdy and I don't think everybody cares for it. It's the TV, it's their, it was like the animated yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. The, the, like, 3D animated one. Yeah, and even I, like, I've seen all of the Star Wars movies, but I never, like, my brothers watched Clone Wars, uh, and I I only watched, I've, I've only probably seen a, a season's worth of it, yeah. and it was, like, one of the later ones. Well, yeah, so, like, I remember when they came out in, like, Cartoon Network, I was like, oh, it's mm-hmm. a kid's show. Yeah. But then, later on, I have a friend who's, like, huge into Star Wars, and he's like, you have to watch it. So, one summer, I was abroad, and I downloaded all six seasons mm-hmm. into my laptop, and um it's great yeah like it's just i tell everybody that you have to watch it between um episode two and episode three because yeah. it just like it kind of explains two, a lot yeah because i was like the whole time i was like anakin okay can i like i guess it's not spoilers at this point no anymore. no they've had enough time <laughs> statute of limitations but i was like <laughs> i always watched episode three and i was like anakin's so stupid like i hope he turns into Darth vader and like dies or something <laughs> and then like after watching the clone wars i was like oh my goodness, Anakin's so cool and I hate yeah. that he's dark. Like, right. It adds so much more depth to their characters. And there was a, certainly a ton of episodes that were like those pointless episodes where it's like, I just watched Dark 2D to entreat you. Like, yeah. go around the desert for three <laughs> hours. But um, yeah, they just, I, I don't know, they could just add depth to characters. And yeah. Ahsoka came out of there. Mm-hmm. And I think they just, and like they could expand the universe because they could go wherever and right, stuff that right. you don't get in the movies. So like, honestly, I... I grew up like liking Star Wars, but I was like I was a fan, but like not hugely into it. Yeah. And after watching the Clone Wars, I was like, "Yeah, I love Star Wars again." <laughs> so it was it's one of those shows in my mind. It's yeah. just a lot. It's six seasons, and I think each season has like twelve or fifteen episodes. It's yeah. a lot. And didn't they introduce the whole Darth Maul having like oh, yeah. spider legs? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And like so, he came back, and then he was. And then, like, it shows that he was living in uh, Solo, the movie. Yeah. So. so a lot of stuff that you see in the movies yeah. are, like, explained. In and, like, Order 66 and stuff Order like 66, that. Order 66, you get that. Ahsoka, I think it's a big one that people don't get. Also, yeah. like, it just leads on to it. Because later on, they did Rebels, too, which yeah. I also like. I don't think it's as good as Clone Wars, but they mm-hmm. also did Rebels. And it just, like, expands on things. So, like, when even when you watch the newer movies, there's stuff that you're like, oh, that makes sense. Because it also expands on the Force, which makes a lot of mm-hmm. sense. Yeah. Apparently, they were going to bring some of that stuff into the newest movies, but they ended up not because people wouldn't get it. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's a whole thing about, like, um, the Force being, like, I don't know, like, they explained it with beings. There was a planet, and the Force was embodied by a person, and, like, it was was very, like, mystical, but it was kind of cool, so. 
Very nice. What's your top five? All right, my number five is actually Stranger Things. Oh, I forgot about <laughs> Stranger <laughs> So I don't usually get into, like, I, it's not it's not even scary. It, I wouldn't say it's, like, and it's not even really thriller. It's more of a drama, but, and I don't get into that type of show, but for some reason it just really hooked me. I would like to take a minute to tell you that this season of Top 5 Dead or Alive is brought to you by St. Pete Cold Brew Coffee. Only available in Pinellas County, Florida, you get a medium, balanced, smooth, and rich flavor. 16-ounce bottle of cold brew for $2.99 each. Free delivery. No cream or sugar, steeped for 24 hours, ground and bottled in St. Petersburg, Florida. Go to stpetecoldbrew.com, get 15% off with code TOP5. Get 15% off with code TOP5, stpinkcoldbrew.com, and order today. So, and it hooked me because I think the whole cast. So, Eleven's character is very, it's something you don't see much, like mm-hmm. a teen girl commanding the screen in a way with her, like, powers and stuff, mm-hmm. and... I think the whole cast is are really good actors and yeah they are um the mind flayer and just I mean I'm obviously I'm not much into like D&D and stuff but just I don't know it just it, it just uh, piqued my curiosity and um I don't know why I keep saying I'm not into this but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not into well, this. I'm, not, the list. I'm not into certain like, like I didn't, yeah. I'm not into the classic... Um, we also didn't grow up in the 80s. Right, that's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I just love the show, and I think they're, they've done three seasons, and they're filming a fourth season, I think, so... Isn't it three? How, or have they done... Yeah, they've I done three. Remember. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Because season two, a lot of people didn't like... Like, they went to Chicago or something oh, yeah, and right. followed Eleven. That's the episode, where Eleven just has, like, one wild ride around <laughs> Chicago. That's the episode. <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, so, you're right. Yeah. No, it was a good show. I, I forgot, <laughs> <laughs> which is why it's probably not on my. No, list. we don't have to agree. Yeah. No, no, but it was it was a good episode. I um Dustin's little um, singing number at the end yep, of whatever yep, season yep, that yep. is that was fantastic. All the kids are really good actors. Yeah. I thought, and they they really kind of expanded on the whole. You know the Russians are, are yeah. underground. Oh and yeah, I love how they own it. It was so it it didn't feel over the top like it kind of was, but it it was yeah. it was like a perfect um, you know villain and also just that whole. Well, some degree you you like get into the mind of the kids because they're like they're like working at an ice cream shop trying to decipher the Russian right, thing, right, right, and it's right. like the most so, ridiculous thing, but like also kind of true. I think it's got a lot. of... I remember when it came out, my friend messaged me and goes, dude, Stranger Things. It's like so perfect, the 80s. And I was like, what are you talking about? We didn't grow up in the 80s. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, exactly. I don't know. So I, I actually avoided the show for the longest time because I do this thing where I avoid things that are really popular because I get annoyed. With yeah, much. yeah, yeah. And then I like picked it up late, like a year later. And I was like, holy crap, this show's really good. Yeah. And yeah, like there's st- it just feels like a period piece. I think it's just because like. We watched like E.T. and like we watched yeah, all these yeah. like and the, the di- Goonies or whatever. Right. And the directors of, of Stranger Things definitely, they even say they took from all the classic yeah. 80s movies in that era and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so it like flips things on its head, yeah. which I think is kind of cool. Yeah, I know. That's a good show. I'm excited for the next season. I forget where it left off. <laughs> they, let's see. I think it was the end of that. I think the singing... Uh, was it Dustin that, singing? Right? I think that is. Yeah, because Hopper of... leaves. Cause yeah, Hopper's yep. And everyone with was, the Russians. Everyone right? was like, "Is Hopper dead and all that?" Which he's got to be alive, I would think. And then um, the Eleven character got pretty popular. I mean, like the the actress, she just oh came yeah, out definitely with, um, Millie Bobby Brown. Yeah, she did uh, the Sherlock, not the Sherlock Holmes, the oh um, Enola. Enola Holmes. Enola that was Holmes. a good. I really liked that movie. I have not seen it, oh, but I've no, seen like the anything. little you know how Netflix plays the trailer. Yeah, the it's actually pretty good. I was like, oh, this is going to be some dumb. Because <laughs> I like Sherlock Holmes, but like, I don't like spin-offs. Yeah. But it was good. The only thing that, that ruins it for me is um, 
whoever plays Sherlock Holmes, Henry Cavill, oh, Superman. Okay. Yeah, I hate the He's whole time. Kind of like vanilla. Well, the whole time I just see him and I'm like, this is Superman. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes is not supposed to be that hot right. or like ripped or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> He's supposed to be a nerd, but yeah. Anyway, that just that's a different. He's supposed to be Benedict Cumberbatch. Exactly. Yeah. Or or um, Robert Downey. Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, I'll take either of those two. <laughs> a little more manic. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's go for your number four. Four. My number four is a series of unfortunate events. Oh, really? The, Netflix. the new one? Yeah, the Netflix okay. series. Um, I don't know. It's weird when I tell people I like that show because everyone's like, isn't that a kid's book? <laughs> and, like, I read those in middle school, so, like, I think I have that, like, okay. attachment to them. Yeah. But the show is, like, fantastically made. Because I don't mm. know if you remember, there was, like, an old one with... There was a movie with... Um, uh, Jim Carrey? Jim Carrey. Yeah. So there's 13 books. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're actually really cleverly written books because they're like... They're supposed to be for like kids growing up and they're very... Like, they'll explain hard words. Mm-hmm. Like, the narrator will say like, mm-hmm. oh, there was... Like, he was like, this was figuratively terrible, which is, you know, he, and he explains it figuratively means this. Oh, and, okay. But he kind of puts it into it very interestingly. And... Um, but he's like... But it, it explains like... It gets into some like deep concepts. Mm-hmm. Um, but so they did the, so they put three books, the first three books into the Jim Carrey movie and they were supposed to make more, but it like never took off because the movie was weird. Cause yeah. I think it was Jim Burton or something like oh, that. Oh, Tim Burton. Yeah. Tim Burton. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> I'm such is. a scholar of all these things. <laughs> but then, so there this new series, they did it with, um, I forget what the, the director was mm-hmm. or the producer, but he's the guy that did Man in Black. Oh, okay. Uh, who has a very, like, Wes Anderson-esque style. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So everything feels like a kid's show. Like, the backgrounds... Like, everything is, like, cookie-cut-out backgrounds. And mm-hmm. all the houses look the same. And, like, every, like pastel colors. Like, everything feels like they're in a set. Like, very fake. Okay. Like Wizard of Oz or Yeah, like, weird like that. But, like, it's incredible. I think the, the, yeah. the just the way they put it together. Again, it feels very Wes Anderson-esque. Mm-hmm. All the shots are very beautiful and, like, framed really interestingly. Um, but then they just did, and they just did every book in two in two episodes, and they just ran through the whole oh, like all yeah. thirteen series, all thirteen cool. books, and um, and Neil Patrick Harris. Is yeah, so I was gonna say, I think he really does the trick. Like I didn't care too much for him before because I didn't really watch How I Met Your Mother. Mm-hmm. I know that's like his big thing. Yeah, but like his ability to play this because like the whole premise is count olaf is the bad guy he's right. trying to capture them and at every step he's always disguised as something and like it's the same premise of everything like they go to live with this relative or someone who's taking care of them count olaf shows up all the adults are dumb and they don't get it and then anyway there's a plan or whatever yeah so neil patrick harris plays this bad guy who plays another character in like every episode oh, and they're really? like ridiculous characters <laughs> like I, I i'm trying like to like in different outfits and stuff yeah like everything like he's a reptile connoisseur from uh, india okay. and then like he is a um like a high-end salesman from auctions and, yeah. and like it's just like ridiculous things uh-huh. but like i don't know the show's great yeah. i i think they designed Sounds it so fun. that adults can watch it too mm. and it was just yeah it's it's like visually it's very interesting and then like i said they they deal with a lot of like interesting themes and yeah. they have a patrick Wharton, I think. Kronk. Oh, Warburton, yeah. <laughs> terrible at all these things. Wait, I can do... Uh, hold on. That's <laughs> yeah, first new group for you. There you go. He, um, he's the narrator. So he plays Lemony Snicket, who like narrates the book. So yeah. he like has a little preface at the beginning, and he's also in like, the most ridiculous scenarios. Hey, ladies... Or men shopping for your ladies, check out Beautifully Made Boutique for the latest women's fashion trends. That's beautifully spelled beautiful with two E's on the end. Beautifully Made Boutique. Found at beautifullymadeboutique.com and also on Facebook and Instagram. Use code TOP5 to get 15% off. Have fun shopping. Alright, and we'll move on to my number four now. My number four is Parks and Recreation. Ooh, so that's pick. kind of a classic pick. Um, it's a Mike Schur. I think he was the he was either the showrunner with Greg Daniels, um, who did The Office. Um, I like that whole cast, but my favorite is Andy, Chris Pratt's character. Oh yeah, 
<laughs> he falls into the pit in the first season, breaks his arm or something, and so and he was living with Rashida Jones' character, and then like he starts out that this slob and he kind of carries that throughout the series. Yeah, but he's kind of a slob, at but all he gets like fit and he's just so funny in the in the whole series and uh, that whole cast though like. Um, Leslie Knope. Yeah, Leslie Knope's character. Um, she really. She's carries. hilarious. She's hilarious. Yeah, she's. I'm looking up. She is. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, yeah. What is her name? She was on SNL. Um. Anyways, and Rob. I thought uh, Rob Lowe joining the cast. Amy Poehler. Yeah, Amy Poehler, of course. Yeah. Um, Rob Lowe joining the cast in like. It's literally. Remember, yeah, best literally thing. the best thing ever. And the. He, there was this one episode it's not even like a famous line or anything but he goes way to be duck it's the mini golf episode and like my friends in college would just say that randomly <laughs> way to be duck but um yeah like he was this all you know health nut yeah. guy <laughs> it was all such times. an interesting it, i felt like it was a little bit uh it was a little bit different in the humor yeah. like it was more like where the office is a little. It's not the office is not dark, but it's more. Uh, would you say condescending in its humor? A little yeah, bit? it's definitely sarcastic. I think. And then, and uh, Parks and Rec is a little more upbeat. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah, it was a little more in your face. I think about like, I don't know about some of the humor. Maybe like yeah. it was a little more ridiculous too. Like the scenarios were like. Because you knew, because The Office was one of those I think that like took off later, so like it wasn't yeah. as popular. Parks and Rec got popular like through because they had like wasn't like McCain in the, in it and like yep Biden and was Joe also Biden in it and, and um, Barbara Boxer yeah like Sanders. they had like big yeah. big names because people like knew of the show and right. like it made sense. Yeah. But no, it, it was hilarious. So I just watched it because Katie Katie had seen it. I hadn't seen mm-hmm. it, and like we just binged it like earlier this year. Mm-hmm. And it was a good one. I really liked... Um, and Aziz Ansari is good in that. Yeah. Nick Offerman. Tom Haverford. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it was. they were all so great. And I, I used to hate Tom at the beginning. And then <laughs> yeah. towards the end, like him and Donna in the treat yourself. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then when him and John Ralphio made the... Gosh, I hate John <laughs> Ralphio so much. <laughs> I've been on a Ben Schwartz kick recently. Uh, he did some improv uh, comedies with... Um, Middle Ditch, Thomas Middle Ditch. Yeah. And he's pretty fun. fun. He's a really funny guy. But, um, yeah. Jean also Ralph- his sister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Money, please. Yes. <laughs> I and honestly, the- like, yesterday thought about putting... We have a little Roomba thing. And Kenny goes, can you set it in the kitchen? And I was about to put a speaker on and be like, DJ Roomba. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that their dad is... Um, Fonzie, Henry yeah. Winkler. No, I mean they. It was they had like a lot more budget. Oh than yeah, the office. It was supposed to be a spinoff. Did you know that? Like it was supposed to be like a print, a copy or a copy or a printer that like the office supposedly like, shuts down. Oh. Uh, and one of their copiers goes to Pawnee, Indiana, and that's uh, like their. That wow. was kind of like the segue of like, like the in universe door thing. Pilot. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, they're also supposed to. Have you seen the? episode that was supposed to spin off from the office into the farm which was going to be dwight's show oh no oh yeah gosh. There's, there's an episode the whole episode where you meet like dwight's brother who is thomas middleditch who i just mentioned a couple minutes ago and like some other family members that you never meet again and it like doesn't make sense oh. but yeah so th- this whole episode they're talking to his family and it never got spun off. Um, and it just, oh, that's funny. Yeah. But all right, let's go with uh, what's your number three? Um, okay, number three. Now we're going for the more serious tone. <laughs> number three is the Crown. Oh, really? I've, yeah, we've been binging that one hard. I mean, I kind of binged the first two seasons, and then after they've been coming out, we've been on them. Mm-hmm. Um. It's a, I don't know. It's just a super interesting, like, well produced. Have you seen the? Because, so like, how based on real life is it? <laughs> yeah, I think that's part of the appeal of it. Like, there's major events sprinkled throughout, but then there's kind of the drama of the yeah. family, and of course, 
the, the, that like there's so, so many know, articles of like how true is this right, and like right, right. the crown of course says none of it is based on yeah, the yeah. true story but like i don't know they base themselves on a lot of stuff and it's actually really interesting because they won't portray any like big events like mm. in the recent episode there was just like um when charles married um diana mm. and like you see it leading up to it and the next episode they're already married and they were like we're not gonna redo the wedding because you know what the wedding looked like yeah, yeah, yeah. so they have these big like checkpoint scenarios um but it's just kind of like and they'll, they'll follow like a different family member at every stage mm-hmm. so i don't know how true it is i think yeah. part of it is just everyone is fascinated by a king and a queen and then kind of yeah. the secret of like ooh. well the, yeah the royals has the always royals. been you know interesting to a lot of yeah. people but I don't know. It's just, like, it's weird because, like, you know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things where, like, you already know the ending. You know, she's still alive and still going. Like, like they have something which is, like, oh, is she going to get overthrown? And it's, like, oh, of course she's not. Yeah. But they just do a really good she's job. sick with the flu? <laughs> is she going to make it? Yeah. <laughs> but, like, but, like, they brought in, like, they had, like, Churchill. And, like, do you see the prime ministers, like, interacting with, with the oh, queen? Okay. And, like, That's cool. I don't know. Yeah, they, they they play it really, really well. I mean, and it's just hugely produced. Like, the yeah. sets are super cool and stuff. Mm-hmm. It makes you hate the whole royal family because mm-hmm. they just do nothing and complain <laughs> about their lives. And it's just them whining the whole time. Like, <laughs> oh, no. Accents. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the accents are definitely something. But, like, their cast is really, really good. Oh, and, that's, and that's all awesome. The, it's, it, I don't know. It's just, it's intriguing. You can just get hooked on it and, like, yeah. go for it. I think yeah, it's, like, I fourth see season. I like, I like, you know, the bio... Yeah, biopics and stuff like that. I mean, I know it's not like yeah. a bio, but maybe it is. She won't <laughs> tell us. <laughs> All right, my let's see. That was your number three, right? That was my number three. So my number three is Thirty for Thirties. Oh, I've never heard of that. Um, it's a collection of documentaries that mm-hmm. ESPN did, mm. um, sports documentaries. So they're all on ESPN Plus now. Um, I. I get it every so every so often, like when stuff gets on there, and I'll do like a free trial or something. Yeah, but, the binge. Yeah, and um, some of my favorite thirty for thirties are Benji, which is actually kind of a sad one. It's um, this high school superstar basketball player got shot and died, um, and it just tells this whole story. Uh, there's one about Jim Valvano, who was the coach of NC State. Um, Wolfpack in like 19 I think I, I want to say 1984 this is where I have nothing to do with the <laughs> conversation <laughs> but he's the one I don't know if you've ever seen the speech um where he said don't don't ever give up don't ever don't ever give up it's a famous speech that he, <laughs> that he gave at the ESPYs what is so funny <laughs> just, you got this speech never give up I was like that's every that's sports a- speech ever <laughs> This was at an award ceremony, oh, okay. and, he, and he had uh, he had cancer, and he was about oh, to die. Oh, now I feel bad for laughing. <laughs> and um, yeah, he, he, and so like every year they have they give money towards the Jimmy V Foundation. Oh, and so like and they always play the speech and everything. And then there's another uh, documentary called Broke, where it it details how like eighty percent of athletes go broke after they oh. after their. Uh, I think they were centering on, it was either football or basketball, but like a majority of fo- of athletes go broke after they're, you know, after they retire That's because crazy. they're not really set up yeah. to, um, or they didn't save their money or yeah. they got into business dealings that were um, failures like restaurants or different. Shack. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Shaq is broke or not, but. No, but he made a, whatever his video game shazam or something oh the movie the movie oh the movie yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that was i have i've heard of the 30 yeah i know that i saw one about a guy who like broke his leg he was like really good he's supposed to be like a michael jordan mm. like kind of mm-hmm. person but like he kept breaking his leg or something like that and he's oh, okay. like a famous one but have you heard of um have you seen the is it the last stand oh it's yeah the last Red Bulls. Yep. so i haven't finished it that's really good i started watching it while we were on vacation i didn't even think dad. about that for this yeah, I I'm on like episode two, but yeah. like I'm I I like I really want to finish that because it seems really good. I yeah, like sports, it is. So. Re- yeah, it is really good, yeah. and it yeah, going through his whole career and when he went to play baseball. This is Michael Jordan we're talking about. You're um, spoiling it for me. I'm on the second episode. <laughs> oh, no. he, he still hasn't retired Sorry. from the Bulls. Okay, 
My bad. Okay. Hasn't done Space oh, oh, Jam yet. Oh, oh. Jeez. <laughs> This episode of Top 5 Dead or Alive is also brought to you by theluckypenny.us, where you can customize t-shirts, mugs, and onesies all at a low cost to you. Use code TOP5, spell out the 5, T-O-P-F-I-V-E, code TOP5 for 10% off at theluckypenny.us and at luckypennyus on Etsy. I won't give any more spoilers. Alright, uh, what's your number two? Okay. So, so I'm going to cheat for number two a little bit because it's not really a trilogy or a film series. It's just the films of Taika Waititi. Oh, okay. For those not familiar with him, I guess he's famous for the Thor Ragnarok movie, I guess. Yeah, probably. Um, which I actually haven't seen. But all of that his other films, one. like his independent stuff, mm-hmm. fantastic. So he did... Um, Jojo Rabbit was the one that recently came out. It's like okay. a dark humor mm-hmm. Nazi film, but really good. Um, the Hunt for the Wilder People, and then What We Do in the Shadows. Um, I'll, I guess I'll throw those three as my trilogy. But like, he's just, I don't know, like they're all low budget films. So like, mm-hmm. I was reading up into like um, The Hunt for the Wild, Wilder People, mm-hmm. and it's the budget was $2 million, and then uh. they made $23 million when it came out. But like, they're super low budget actors that no one knows, but like his humor is hilarious. And mm-hmm. like, I can't do the New Zealand accent, but like <laughs> just the, his timing and stuff yeah. on things. It's super clever. Like he's one of those that just like, it's artsy about things. Mm-hmm. Um, what we do in the shadows is about like these vampires that are doing a documentary. And it's like, <laughs> it's like the stupidest thing. Like it's these three vampires that live in New Zealand and they're doing this documentary on their lives. And like, he has all these like details about them and, you go through their lives and how it sucks, and then they like <laughs> Literally. run into a pack. Yeah. <laughs> and then you run, they run into a pack of like werewolves, and they have a thing with the werewolves. <laughs> and then one of them says a bad word, and they're like, "Hey!" And he's like, "Oh yeah, we're not swearwolves. We're werewolves. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they're on rehab or something." Wow. Like yeah, it's all these like series of things. And so, he did a episode of The Mandalorian. Right? He did an episode of The Mandalorian. Yeah, and now he's doing the new Thor movie. So he's like mm. hit it big. Yeah. But like his independence, or Jojo Rabbit also, if you haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. Have you, did you watch that one? I've, I've seen the trailer. I haven't okay. seen it. Like it sounds Scarlett terrible. Johnson. Yeah, Scarlett Joe's in it. Um, this little kid is like part of the Nazi youth oh, okay. and has his imaginary friend is Hitler. Hmm. And, and, and Taika plays Hitler. It's like the weird, like you look at it and you're like, this, this is weird. But like mm-hmm. the whole premise of it, like... It's a great... It, it's fiction. It's fiction that takes place in, oh, like, okay. Nazi Germany. But, like, the premise of it is weird. But, like, what he does with it is really cool. And, like, how he... He really highlights, like, kind of how people... Because you always wonder, like, how did people think they were doing right mm-hmm. at the time? Yeah. But it really shows you, like, how in that time people couldn't get it. And it's from, like, the eyes of a child. Okay. But, like, some things are already... Yeah, anyway. That makes sense. He's, he's crazy. He's good. Anything by him, I think you should just watch. So that's my cheat for number two. Okay. My number two is Community. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, this is, I feel like this is a little bit of an underrated show. Because it was kind of on at the same time as other good comedies like The Office and Parks and Rec, but didn't get the ratings as much as the other shows did. Uh, my favorite character is Chang. He doesn't get as much screen time. It's Ken Jong's character. Oh, yeah, of course, Senior Chang. Senior Chang, who then gets fired from being a teacher and then and loses lives, lives in the air vents and yeah. stuff <laughs> but uh so like the show was very meta and like uh, oh yeah um uh, danny pudi's character is always like he's my favorite he, abed yeah abed is talking about how the show like he's he's thinking his own life is a show and all that and all the other characters are in the show and he's like talking about we need to do six seasons in a movie yeah and they mess with, well they they need to do a movie to you know complete that but yeah and just the fact that they um weren't afraid to go outside the box and do like a claymation episode yeah and like i know they were video ridiculous. game episode and they were doing stuff that not a lot of comedies were doing at the time no, it just, they took it ever When they did the Secret Garden one with the trampoline, <laughs> like, it was just, yeah. and, and Donald Glover is also fantastic. Yeah. Like, Troy and Abbott, to me, are, yeah. like, hilarious. Troy and Abbott in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just, like, 
just like off the top of my head, it's the all of the paintball episodes yep, yep. were like amazing. Yeah, that's, I have that in my notes. The pillow fort episode, yeah, was also crazy. One. And then the my favorite is the when they roll the die and then yep. you have to like the timeline. The timeline is <laughs> like this is the scary timeline or like this is the, <laughs> the darkest the, the, timeline. The darkest timeline of all. And then they that's actually a pretty good podcast. Uh, Joel McHale and um, Ken Jong do a podcast called The Darkest Timeline. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I'll have to check it There's, out. There's uh, 25 episodes, yeah. Someone just sent me the gift today because I was making a joke about recent events, I guess. Or I just said, like, I was having lunch and then I just came back from lunch and realized that I just got, like, news. And he sent me a gift of, like, Troy walking back into the apartment with the pizza. Like, <laughs> and everything's, and everything's on fire. <laughs> on fire. Someone's dead. And, like, I was like, yeah, that's, that's what it feels like. <laughs> oh, man. That was funny. All right. What's your number one? Okay. So... Drum roll, please. Thank you. The Oceans series. Oceans 11, Movies. 12, and 13. Okay, yeah. that's solid. I don't... I, I, I don't know. Like, they're not super artsy. They're not super... I don't know. I just like it them. Just I've always, right it just hits you I think I saw them when I was younger, and I've always, like... Yeah, it's, it's I'm also a, cool... a sucker for Brad Pitt and George and... Clooney and Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, it's a good heist movie and everything. Yeah, it was just like heist. I like I've watched them back and I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like, <laughs> this will never happen. But, and and you can tell that they were just hanging out. Like that's the thing, the interesting thing. I think they have pretty good chemistry, all the actors. Because mm-hmm. like, part of it just seems like you're just hanging out with yeah. them and they're playing villains. But um, yeah, I don't that's know. how you know when you're a good actor when you know yeah. it just seems like you're hanging out. Yeah, no, that was just a good series. And it just, I don't know, it was just ridiculous and over the top. I don't really, yeah. I, I mean, I like Danny Ocean, I guess. They did a reboot of it with Sonya oh, yeah. Bullock. Ocean's 8. Ocean's 8. But I didn't know where it was. Where they were I saw it. that. It was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it was fine. I, I was, it was weird that they were, like, tying it into it. Like, he's dead. And then it was like, oh, shoot, I spoiled that one. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> now I'm like, are they going to do an Ocean's 14? Like, yeah. Um, yeah, it just it, it was like funny and all the characters were crazy. So. <laughs> What's your top one? All right, my one is The Office. Oh, I mean, you, yeah, you I took kind of took of that one out of yours, but I had to put it in mine. Uh, my favorite character is probably Michael Scott or Jim. Um, Michael really kind of was the MVP <laughs> of the whole series because when he left in season seven, seven, yeah. Like, season eight was pretty rough with Robert California. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, season nine was was pretty good because Greg Daniels uh, came back and uh, I think Mike sure came back and wrote for that season. Um, but... It did give us D'Angelo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, D'Angelo definitely had... <laughs> Two episodes Some of good moments, yeah. Some were awkward, but, you know... You had to work out some kinks at, you know, every show goes through that. Uh, and then just, yeah, Jim's dead panda camera is, yeah. is uh, all time, all time good TV moment or, or, or like a, a trope, trope yeah. for the show. The thing is, The Office just defined so much. I mean, it was like, for me, The Office is like, if I just, if I'm working and I just want something mindless in the background, I'll put The Office mm-hmm. on. If I actually want to watch something, I'll put The Office on. Well, yeah. not anymore because it's now out of Netflix. Yeah, and, yeah, and now it's on Peacock, Peacock. And, and you have stuff. to pay for more than the first season or something. Yeah, but, um, yeah, no, they just, and, like, I'll watch episodes over and over and over yep. again. And the fun run is my <laughs> top. <laughs> so. Yeah, and it's been said, um many times over but dinner party is uh, oh yeah one of the top episodes his uh michael's top characters are great prison mike um <laughs> oh god <laughs> so many there's so many things you watch and that's why i can go that would not fly today <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely not uh the whole jim pam romance will they or won't they dwight angela um yeah i don't know just the whole the whole show really is because I've watched it through twice, and yeah, yeah, you can keep going back to it, like you said, and just all the Creed moments are hilarious. <laughs> Creed. The fact that Creed was actually in a band in the '60s and yeah. like open for Jimi Hendrix and all yeah. this stuff, and it just puts a cherry on top of the whole thing. You need to check out B.J. Novak's stand up because mm. when you I've watch his stand up, really it's The Office. Like his yeah. stand up is so like sarcastic yeah. and dry. Yeah. It's basically the office, and you go, "Oh, now I get why this guy like wrote for the office because it was literally that." But yeah, 
Yeah, and he was so young. He was like 23 or 24. Yeah. Him yeah, and no, Mindy Kaling. <laughs> Gosh, Mindy. Like, every every character in The Office was just hysterical. <laughs> All right. So, let's do uh, our new segment this season, Guess the Five. All right. All right. So, this is going to be the top five streaming services by subscription. The, or, yeah, by total number of subscriptions. Okay. okay. So, I'll just let you guess because I've seen the list. Okay. Um, all right. Are we going? So let's. I feel like I need to go with number one. First, okay. Because I don't think. Try Netflix. to get number. Yeah, Netflix is no, number it's one. It's gotta be. Number two. Is it Disney Plus? It is not. Is it Hulu? Nope. Oh my goodness. Okay, because I was between those two. I thought it would be Disney Plus or Hulu because everyone jumped on the Disney. According to my information. It's not those two. So it's okay. It's not Netflix. App, Apple? No, Apple TV doesn't have a no. subscription. Oh, no. What other one it's Amazon. It? Oh, oh. Because oh, probably... Because yeah. everybody just has it. <laughs> yeah, they're probably just counting all the Prime memberships or yeah, something. Yeah, that's not fair. Amazon, <laughs> get out of here. You don't even have any good shows. <laughs> it's like Marvelous Mrs. Maisel and... Yeah, Top Gear or like oh, Grand yeah. Tour or whatever. It's rebranded. Yep. Uh, so yeah, it goes Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, Disney Plus, and you know number five. Um, shoot, Apple TV? No, ESPN Plus. Oh yeah, sports don't exist in so- my mind. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not a thing. Do you watch any soccer? I don't. Or football? I, I I'll watch Peru when they play, but yeah. like I don't keep up. There's too much. I, my my sports of choice right now are Formula One. I don't know. And yeah, because it's every Sunday, and mm-hmm. I can just I just know when it's on and. Like, I don't have to keep up with teams playing multiple games. It's yeah. just, like, everybody plays at once, and right. I can just see them. And surfing. And that's free. So, oh, the word nice. Surf League. So, cool. you can just do the two. Are you following the Bucks at all in there? I watched yesterday the last yeah. the last uh, quarter. I, I'll jump on any of any, yeah. you know, if it's a local, team, local I'll, team, I'm about it. I'll yeah, I'm for excited for them. This would be the first time ever that a hometown team wins the super bowl so like whoever hosts okay the super you're bowl. jumping you're three steps ahead we haven't even made it there well i know but i'm saying yeah they only need to win the nfc championship and then they go to the super bowl americans love their freaking statistics <laughs> don't they um okay I, I, wait no so how bad were we before okay so the bucks had not been to the playoffs since like 2007 or 2008 okay and they hadn't won a playoff game since 2003. Okay. So it's all Brady. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, and they haven't won a Super Bowl since 2003. So. Okay. Here's my follow-up uh, trivia thing for you. I know you're a big fan of the, of the Cubs. Yes. I moved to Chicago. Yes. And the Cubs went to the World Series yes. and won. <laughs> so you're welcome. This is, thank you very much I'm for bringing full me responsibility happiness. for that. Yes. I was yes. like, the first thing I thought when they were blowing the sirens in the city because <laughs> the Cubs won, it was like, Taylor's got to be really happy about this. And I was. Yeah, we were all watching. I remember that night. That was great. Yeah. And, it, and it, that one, it like went into extra innings and yeah, it was like they were down game. and it started raining. So they had to do a rain delay. And then it's crazy how much Chicago loves the Cubs. Yeah. I will say that. It was yeah. weird. <laughs> Because it had been 108 years. And flying the W, it took me forever to figure out <laughs> why people like, what had are all these W's blue on? W's on their windows. I was like, yeah. That's awesome. It was exciting, though. It's one of those moments you want to be there for. All right. Well, I think uh, we're at 43, so I think we could just ah. um, wrap it up there. Do you have anything to promote? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an Etsy no, uh... shop or... Uh... <laughs> All right. I should advertise with you. If any of your um, listeners are interested in product design, yeah, Studio 2133. All righty. We'll make your dreams come true. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you, Sergio Marquina, thank for, you for having me. Coming on and giving your expertise on bingeable TV shows and movies. Yeah, I'm sure if someone actually knows something about film and TV, they'd be like, <laughs> terrible picks. <laughs> But uh, you gave wonderful insight. Uh, All right. We are going to see you guys next week on Top 5 Dead or Alive. Signing off. Bye.